Hey everyone, welcome back to BlenderDiplom.com. I'm Gottfried Hofmann and I'm going to show you how to use the new skin modifier which, which has been introduced in Blender 2.64. So let me just edit here and now let's have a look. Basically it's generating geometry error on edges while it's ignoring the faces. So you could use this for some abstract art if you look at this default cube here or for some serious modeling and I'm going to show you how to do it. I'm adding a plane, going to edit mode, hit W, merge at center, then I'm turning on screencast keys, and now if I'm adding a skin modifier around it, I'm getting a cube. That's of course not that um, interesting yet, but if I'm starting extruding the vertices, it's definitely um, starting to look interesting for our if especially from the 3D perspective. And now if I'm adding a mirror modifier and a subsurf modifier, you should already see where this is going. Let me first go back to edit mode. And you can see the skeleton that we are actually creating right now because um limit selection to visible is still turned on. Once I turn this off, you can see it and um let me extrude some stuff a little further. Now what I want to do is I want to create a hat for this little stick figure, but I can't um, do this with the current stuff we got here because I only can create store sausage-like structures. So what we need is more volume and you can add this by hitting Control A and dragging the mouse and you see it's getting broader and thus um, we're getting a little more volumes and so now we, I got a hat for this stick figure. And I'm also going to do this here and make things a little bigger right here. And here maybe a little smaller so we got a throat. So let's see what we, uh, else we can do. I'd like this shading to be smooth but I can set it here. I have to set it in the modifier itself. And when I do this there is some shading issues down here. And what's that? Well, you see this red circle around um, this vertex. This marks the so-called root of the skin modifier. And um, this root will compute all the rotations for the ent entire skin. And if it's at the limp or at some part that's sticking out, you'll have this shading issue. So what you can do is um, you can simply, OK, Matt put it, for example, here in the middle, and the shading issue is gone. And now let's also look at something else. If I put this here, you will see that the flow of the um, geometry is changing, the topology. And to get a symmetrical, symmetrical topology, we need to set it um, somewhere to the center. So that's another reason why I want to set it here. And the third reason is, later, when we are creating the armature, at the root there will be created the master bone which we can use to move this entire thing and that's a third reason why we should it put here somewhere in the center and it's in case of the stick figure around era right around the hips now another thing with the um, flow of the topology um, there is this symmetry axis currently set to x if we change this for example to set symmetry is changing and of course, this is not the kind of topology we want because we've mirrored it around the x-axis, so we want the symmetry to be around the x-axis. And also be careful if you move this around, the there might be happening that there is no symmetry at all. Okay, not in this case, but be careful. And don't forget, symmetry axis just means symmetry of the um, topology, not symmetry of the model itself. That has to be set by using a mirror modifier. So. What else do we have here? Let's see, mark loose and clear loose. I'm gonna show you how to do this in a minute, but let me first subdivide this here, and um, now let's create some kind of arm. And now I want to create a hand for this. So let's see what we're happening if we are just um, moving out here some kind of fingers. Well, you see all the fingers here, but maybe I want this area to be the entire hand. How can I change this? Let's see what's happening if I hit mark loose. 
and we see something has changed. We got a flat area here around these vertices. And if I subdivide this here, you can see it even better that this is um, generated around the um, vertices that are next to the one where, where we set mark loose. Now with clear loose, we got this normal setup with the um, geometry created around these edges here. And if we set clear loose, mark loose, this one will not be compu uh, compu computed. And the geometry is created around those vertices here. Pretty cool. Now, next thing about this equalize radii. But first, to show you this, I need to show you something else first. And that is how to make this part here even more flat. And you can do this by hitting Ctrl A and then hitting an axis. In this case, I've hit, it, hit X, even though this is actually the Y axis, but that's, um, that's a strange behavior. Just keep in mind, if you hit Ctrl A and hit um, X, Y, or C, you will have um, you will scale this the thickness around your edges around around the axis. So we can make this even more flat. And um, yeah, let's reduce this a little bit because this is a, at the end it's um, meant to be a hand. And let's be very careful because the modifier can easily create pretty bad topology. And uh, if you just move it over a few pixels, the topology becomes very good. So let's just be careful. And now I'm gonna extrude the fingers. And now if you take a look at this, the fingers are still flat, but I want them to be round. How can I fix this? With equalized radii, which will make flat parts round again. Very, very cool feature. And now I'm just also making this a little smaller. And maybe also subdivide these parts, so um, this is more finger-like. So, yep. Divide and um, down here and down here, and now we got our fingers. Okay, of course, this um, hand would still need a lot more work. We'd need to uh, make it a lot smaller and everything, but let's just quit it for now. Um, this shouldn't be a masterpiece, but just a um, basic demonstration of what the skin modifier is able to do. Now, if we look at this in um, set, in wireframe mode, you see that the uh, topology it's creating is actually very good. It's just my really bad modeling skills that don't make it look great. So let's go back and see something else I want to show you just before I quit this. Um, let me first um, make that guy a little thicker. And now there's another option we got here, and that's called branch smoothing. Let's just see what's happening here. Okay, he's obviously he's getting thinner, but why? And why only um, at places where we got branches? Well, take a look at the topology once again, and you see at the places where we, where we got branches, we got faces that are really, really not so well off. They are rather distorted, and by for example, this is uh, totally not set to smooth, and we got a very, very bad part here where uh, this is actually a quad, but it's this is um, these two edges are so near to each other that it's really nearly a triangle that's very bad for shading and everything. And by branch smoothing, we can smooth this out so the topology gets relaxed. And what we are also getting by this is that the guy becomes thinner. So you really have to. Uh, yeah, it's a trade-off between better topology and um, the guy getting dinner, and maybe you can't um, make things as cool as you wanted to, exactly as you wanted to be them to be. But I'm usually going for better topology. So now, just a small little trick I want to show you. When you get problems with the topology, that's my, for example, here we got this very sharp edge here, which I don't want. Sometimes it's hel sometimes it helped to just extrude to the op opposite direction too, and you see what's happening here. Um, the 
sharp edge is resolved and our foot looks a lot better. Now I'm calling this guy finish because yeah, it's not meant to be a masterpiece and instead I'm gonna show you how to create the armature. Let me first apply the mirror modifier. Ah, you can do it this in edit mode. And now I can create the armature. And now let's check out pose mode. Well, we got the master bone here, just right at the place where the root is. Just as I told you, and we can post this guy already, but it's still not perfect because it's still got the skin modifier applied. So let me just um, Alt G, clear the rotation and the position, and apply the skin modifier. Now um, posing is becoming a lot better. And yeah, something up. Something else I'd like to show you is um, how to use the skin modifier for sculpting, because that's um, actually the main reason you would use this. Um, you would create a base mesh in it within a few clicks and then you would start to sculpt. So let's add a multi-resolution modifier. It needs to be on multi-res, where is it? It needs to be on top of the stack and remove the subsurf. Now I can do the basic sculpting thing, subdivide a few times, maybe reduce this for the preview. And now get to sculpt mode. And let me start sculpting. I'm not a good sculptor, so I'm just gonna create a small belly button, subtract. And a few other stuff, but um, yeah, it's just to, sh to show you, yeah, you can easily um, create a base mesh for sculpting and everything is cool. So maybe a face, because it's a smiley guy. It's your everyday John Doe you see on the streets. People are always smiling. Nobody is unhappy ever. And also people got nipples. So that's very important when sculpting. You need to take care for the details. So let me also add the nipples. And now we got a nice little fella here, just in a few clicks, thanks to the awesome new skin modifier. And I've also added a few links to the YouTube video that will show you a few cool places if you may need more information about the skin modifier. That's a cool thread on Blender Artists that shows another few examples and a few more cool tutorials about the skin modifier and some links to cool stuff on BlendSwap. So have fun and keep blending.